Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about ratios and proportions. And for most of you, this should just be a review. You should already know what ratios and proportions are all about. You should understand that this baby is not proportional to this pair of pajamas. You should also realize that this guy's head is not proportional to his birthday cap. And the mirror made these girls' faces out of proportion. So you probably know what most of this is, and this is going to be a review of ratios, rates, proportions, cross products, and scale. Well, let's start with ratios. What's the ratio of limes to lemons? For that matter, what does ratio mean? What do we use a ratio for? Well, we use a ratio to compare the quantities of two different things. In this case, limes to lemons. And I can look at that picture and see that there are six limes and two lemons. So, the ratio of limes to lemons is six to two. Now, I was asked for the ratio of limes to lemons, not lemons to limes. Had I been asked the ratio of lemons to limes, it had been two to six. But limes to lemons is 6 to 2. And I can write that a couple of different ways. I can write 6 to 2, but I can also write 6 colon 2, which is also 6 to 2. Or I can write it as a fraction, 6 to 2, or 6 over 2, or 6 per 2. 6 per 2, that fraction. I can simplify that to 3 over 1. And I can simplify any ratio the same way I'd simplify a fraction. 6 to 2 simplifies to 3 to 1. And if I've got a ratio with a denominator of 1, I've also got a rate. 3 to 1 is a rate. The rate is 3 limes per lemon. Miles per gallon is a rate. That's the number of miles you get with one gallon of gas. Or miles per hour, the number of miles you travel in one hour. Or calories per serving, the number of calories per one serving. A rate is a ratio with a denominator of one. So my ratio of limes to lemons is 6 to 2, or it's 3 to 1. They're both correct answers because 3 to 1 equals 6 to 2. I, if I go from 3 to 1 to 6 to 2, all I've done is increase the numerator by 2 times and de increase the denominator by 2 times. I've grown the top and the bottom proportionately, and so my two uh, ratios are proportional. If I have two ratios that are equal, they're said to be proportional. Three is to one as six is to two. Well, let's see how an understanding of ratios might be helpful, even if you're not a mathematician. I am also a cook, and I make some great salsa, and my salsa recipe calls for six tomatoes per one quart of salsa. The ratio of tomatoes to salsa is six tomatoes per one quart. However, today I need to make four quarts of salsa, and i got to figure out how many tomatoes I need. Well, let's see. My ratio of tomatoes to salsa quarts is 6 to 1. And I want to make 4 quarts, but I've got to make it proportional or it won't taste right. If I put in too many or too few tomatoes, 
I won't have my salsa recipe and it won't taste well. So I've got to figure out how am I going to figure out how many tomatoes I need. I need to make a ratio that's proportional to or equal to 6 over 1. Now, what I do know is that I need 4 quarts of salsa. And in my ratio of tomatoes to salsa, the quarts is on the bottom, the tomatoes is on the top. So I'd want to put the 4 quarts on the bottom, and I wouldn't know what number to put on the top because that's what I'm trying to figure out. X is the number of tomatoes I need. But what I do know is that the number of tomatoes I need for 4 quarts has to be proportional to 6 tomatoes per 1 quart. And what we just did is really the hardest thing about solving ratio or proportion problems. It's setting them up correctly. And there's really more than one way to set them up correctly. Let's look at this. Let's say my ratio of uh, tomatoes to salsa or quarts of salsa to uh, tomatoes is 1 to 6. 1 quart of salsa per 6 tomatoes. I could multiply that out and discover that for 2 quarts of sauce, I need 12 tomatoes. Or for 3 quarts of sauce, I need 18 tomatoes. Or for 4 quarts, I need 24 tomatoes. Well, now I can create ratios as long as I'm consistent. I could create one ratio between the number of quarts of sauce and the number of tomatoes. And those ratios would be 1 quart of sauce per 6 tomatoes equals 3 quarts of salsa per 18 tomatoes. In this case, I've got the salsa on the top of each fraction and the tomatoes on the bottom of each fraction. And I've set it up consistently, and it's going to work. However, I could set it up a different way. I could say 1 quart of salsa is to 2 quarts of salsa as 6 tomatoes is to 12 tomatoes. And you'll see that 1 over 2 equals 6 over 12. 6 over 12 reduces to a half. So I can set it up either way. I just need to be consistent. Well, let's have a party. I'm going to make some salsa for this party. And my recipe for salsa requires 6 tomatoes per 1 quart of salsa. My ratio of tomatoes to salsa is 6 to 1. Or my ratio of salsa to tomatoes is 1 to 6. I can list it either way. I've chosen to list it 1 to 6. 1 quart of salsa per 6 tomatoes. But I can go either way. What I have to remember is I have to be consistent. If I'm putting quarts on the top of one of my ratios, then I need to put quarts on the top of the other ratio. So that's what I'll do. Because I want to find out how many tomatoes I need for 4 quarts of salsa. I want a proportional salsa recipe. I want to grow my uh, quarts of salsa by the same amount that I grow my tomatoes. So I'm going to set up a ratio 1 over 6 equals 4 over T. And T is the number of tomatoes I need for 4 quarts of salsa. I could also set this up this way, though. I could say that one quart of salsa is to four quarts of salsa, as six tomatoes is to how many tomatoes? An unknown number of tomatoes. I could set it up either way. Once I've got it set it up correctly, though, it's pretty easy to solve. I'm going to use cross products to solve either of these ratios. You remember what cross products are? Well, that's where I multiply the numerator on one side by the denominator on the other side of the equal sign. And then I take the denominator on the first side and multiply it by the numerator on the second side. And then I've got an equation that can be pretty easily solved. I do the same for either of these. And I'm going to get the same answer no matter which one I use. The 1 to 6 equals 4 to t, to t or the 1 to 4 equals 6 to t. They're both going to give me... 1 times t equals 6 times 4, or t equals 24. I need 24 tomatoes to make 4 quarts of salsa. 
Ratios and proportions are a really valuable tool that you'll use in your entire life. Not just on making salsa, but let's say you were an architect and you needed to draw a scale drawing or an elevation of what a house might look like. Well, you'd make a proportional drawing or a scale drawing. The doors and the windows would be relatively the same size as in the real house, they'd just be shrunk down by the same amount. A map is a scale drawing or a proportional drawing. You couldn't put draw the United States or even the Southeast United States on a big piece of paper. You'd need to shrink it down, but you'd want everything to remain relatively the same size compared to each other. So you'd shrink it down to a scale. In this case, the scale is one inch equals 240 miles. And let's say I needed to know the distance between Oklahoma City and Little Rock. Well, I could pull my ruler over and measure the distance in inches, and it's about an inch and a quarter. So then I could say that my scale, one inch per 240 miles, has to be equal to the inches on the map, 1.25 inches, per the actual number of miles, or x. 1 over 240 has to equal 1.25 over x. Now I use cross products, and I get x equals 1.25 times 240, or 300 miles. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. All right, Madison's a pretty, pretty prolific note taker. She took 10 pages of notes during two hours of class. After attending three hours of class, how many total pages of notes will Madison have in her notebook? Well, let's see you see, see this. Let's circle our numbers, underline our question, and let's give our question a variable name. We'll call it X. X equals the number of pages of notes that Madison would take in three hours. Well, looks to me like I could create some ratios. Madison took a total of 10 pages of notes during two hours. That's 10 pages per two hours. I could write that as a ratio. 10 pages per two hours. And then I've got three hours and an X or an unknown number of pages. So I could set up a proportional relationship with the original ratio. I could say that the unknown number of pages per three hours has to equal 10 pages per two hours. Now once I get these set up, they're real easy to solve. I'm just going to use cross products and I'm going to come up with 30 equals 2x and then I'll divide both sides by 2 and I'll get 15 equals x. Madison would have created 15 pages of notes in three hours. Try this one. Hit your pause button. Try the problem. Hit your forward key to move on to my answer. We'll see you CC this, and, and that'll help us understand what's going on here. The uh, scale drawing of your room is, is drawn at a scale of 1 inch per 10 feet. And when you measure on the drawing, your room, it ends up being an inch and a half by two inches. And we need to figure out what the dimensions of the actual room are. So we've got two scales to convert. Our ratio, our scale ratio, is one inch per 10 feet. Now one of our dimensions is an inch and a half. In my scale ratio, I've got the inches on top and the feet on the bottom. So I'd want to do that in my uh, unknown measurement too. I'd have one and a half inches per how many feet? I've got one inch per 10 feet equals an inch and a half per an unknown number of feet. Well now I'm just going to use cross products and I'll get X equals 15. My other dimension is two feet. I have to set that up exactly the same way. 1 inch is to 10 feet, as 2 inches is to how many feet? 
And when I do the cross products on that, I get x equals 20. So my new room is 15 feet by 20 feet. That's our lesson on ratios and proportions. I hope you learned a lot. Now go test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find there some worksheets and quizzes on ratios and rates. Well, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you come back again soon. And I hope you tell your friends about mastermath.info.